What's that Italian guy's TikTok that was going viral on Twitter? Does anyone have that? Where it's like, he puts like a fertilizer in a coffee and goes, oh, it's so much better than espresso. Someone had to have seen it. We are a, a no, not attenzione pickpocket. No, you weirdo. Wait, no, no, no. There's someone in here that saw it. We have to watch it right now. We have to watch it right now. After a short hour. Oh, here it is. There you go. Hive mind, baby. Hive mind, baby. Hive Sex. mind, motherfucker. That's why I know this community is literally, we are one. We are one unit. We are legion, okay? Here, this is really funny. If of American. I wake up so excited for another day of working. After singing the national anthem, I make my amazing American coffee. So much better than espresso. I'm looking for breakfast, but there are no cold pizza, so I have to skip. Oh, where's this? An apple? So cute. I'm so lucky because I have only one hour and 45 minutes to drive to work. Time for lunch. I only have five minutes, so I order fast food and I eat at my desk. Mm. After a short 14 hours, it's dark, so I take my work home. Good night, my love. See you tomorrow. Dane. <laughs> oh, it's an apple. So cute. <laughs> I love this because it's like, no, it wasn't a dildo. It was money. He goes to sleep and like kisses his money. Good night. So I love this because it, it is so fucking Italian. It is so Italian to like look at all of the American shit from an Italian lens and be like, these motherfuckers work 14 hours. They don't take eight hour lunch breaks. They hate espresso and only drink their garbage American coffee. Drip coffee slander, every, this else is true. I mean, espresso is, espresso clears, I'm sorry. Eating his food at the desk because he has a five minute lunch break. I understand why everyone hates us. I mean, it's like that and then the sense of entitlement. Guys, one of the best things on the fucking planet is traveling as an American. Okay, I talked to the Aussie boys about this recently, and I was like, they quite literally open up specific lines for American passports, okay? You rarely ever need a visa to go anywhere. This is not something that people, Americans do not even comprehend. Like, there is no process of, like, begging a fucking embassy to give you a goddamn visa, okay? You literally don't have to get a visa anywhere. Um, you're, when you go through passport check, oftentimes at customs, they have a specific line for Americans that's like shorter. It's not the best for locals. We all hate you. Yeah, probably because, and I want to show another, uh, tweet from, uh, uh, another tweet that went viral. It was a TikTok of the model lady who went to, uh, where did she go? To Naples or something? Napoli. Uh, do you guys have that one? Let's watch. That is the perfect representation of why also people fucking despise, uh, oh, the Amalfi Coast, sorry. If you want to see peak terrible American traveler, watch I Show Speed in Japan. Absolutely fucking lutely not will I, I will never do that. Does anyone have it? Every this one. Now, there's two different things I want to mention here. Okay, thank you so much. There's two different things I want to mention here. Don't get me wrong. I love it, but be serious. This is a literal manual labor, not vacation. Okay? So this person went to a, a desolate part of Italy. Okay? And, like, looked at how beautiful it is. And didn't realize that, like, it's beautiful and preserved for the reasons that she's about to complain. 
Let's watch. Every single influencer and TikToker who put the Amalfi Coast on my For You page over the last two months deserves jail time. Because while they showed you the gorgeous coastlines and the cute little towns, what they didn't tell you were the disclaimers. First of all, it's impossible to get here. You have to fly into Naples. Then you have to take a train from Naples to Sorrento. Then you have to stand in 90 degree weather waiting for a ferry. When I heard that, that's where she lost me. I was like, what, what do you mean? You, like, that's a bad thing? I was like, I'm sorry. So you're taking, you're going on a beautiful train ride, like a fucking incredible journey, covering Italian pastures? That's the, why are you saying this in a negative way? I don't understand. To take a train from Naples to Sorrento. That Okay, first of all, don't say she could have taken a fucking car. Have you seen Italian streets? Are you out of your mind? An American can barely fit physically through Italian fucking roads, let alone in a goddamn car. Are you out of your mind? But yeah, that this is immediately when she lost me. She was like, oh, you got to take a train? I'm like, are you fucking joking? That's like, that's the point. I suspect people do it for that experience. Then you have to stand in 90 degree weather waiting for a ferry to get on a ferry with all of your luggage. Mind you, we've been in Europe for two weeks. All of your luggage, lug it onto the ferry, get to Amalfi Coast, finally. Then, to get to the highest of the high points, the beautiful hotels with the gorgeous, this, there is no streets here. There's no cars driving. Wow. I can't believe she's like my double wide can't fit through here. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why it's beautiful, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? That's like quite literally the point. I went to Cuba and they didn't have a single car that was built after 1953. What is going on? <laughs> this is awful. Where are the Ford Focuses? So, um, anyway, the point is, that's why it's beautiful. And what you're supposed to do in that situation is pack light so you can truly enjoy it. And uh, I think she's just, like, trying to meme about this. But, of course, Twitter did the most Twitter thing possible. There were people literally being like, American tourists should die. Permanent uh, first world, uh, permanent genocide of the first world. It's like, brother, you're talking about Italy, okay? Like, calm down. It's not like, this is not, she didn't fly in to fucking uh, Laos, okay? <laughs> it's just like, chill. Calm down. She didn't get the point. So you have to walk up 160 stairs with all of your luggage to get to the top of this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous area with these beautiful views, carry it, and then also all the power went out because the Amalfi Coast doesn't have the infrastructure to support this tourism. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, you kind of got it. Like, that's the whole point. That's, the, that's quite literally the point. Um, but also, all of those TikToks that go there are probably on, like, you know, uh, a, a pedophile banker's yacht, so it's not that big of a problem for them. Yeah, the ones who are on TikTok that post the Amalfi Coast, yeah, they get on a fucking private jet with, like, 11 pedophile billionaires, okay? And then they fly in directly to wherever the fuck. They get on a mega yacht where there's even more pedophile uh, finance billionaires on the yacht, but the yacht is so large that I guess you can, like, play hide-and-seek with the pedophile billionaires, and then you fucking get on the yacht, and then you take sexy-ass Instagram photos from the fucking yacht. Anyway. I was told it was a... <laughs> I was told it was a finance industry networking event. Yeah, always. Uh, it's a, yeah, it is. It's a finance industry pedophile networking event. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's visited by a thousand people each summer. It gets super busy. There are hotels and Airbnbs all over the place. It's just on one side of a hill, mountain, so of course it's a bit difficult at times. So wait, she responded to this from what I heard in the chat. Where This is her response. No, I did not expect it to go that viral, but I did want to show um, the fully... In 
Cleveland's version of what it means to be on the Amalfi Coast. So first of all, I want to acknowledge that I did enjoy the B&B that I stayed in, um, and I did not have to actually personally lug all of my luggage up. My boyfriend and our B&B host carried up all of our luggage, so I did not have to lift a finger. She had a butler? The Airbnb butler? The Airbnb comes with a butler? That's awesome. What the fuck? Why does she keep saying B&B? Dude, if anything, they need to fucking eviscerate Airbnbs, dude. I God, I hate it. If there's one thing I hate the most, it's Airbnbs, I think. Like, Magic Wand, you get to eliminate one application. Like, you get to eliminate one application out of all of them, right? I, I'm going with Airbnb. Oh, she means a bed and breakfast. It's not an Airbnb. Ah, same shit. LinkedIn? Fuck no. No. Airbnb. There's fucking 7,000 in Amsterdam and uni students are sleeping in bags. I hate it. Yeah, my point does not change. Vancouver has more Airbnb listings and rentals right now. It's toxic and ruins housing availability. Dude, one day, give me one fucking day, I take the application down and I, uh, and I forcibly take every single Airbnb unit away from these Airbnb fucking landlords on TikTok. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm not even talking about the mom and pop landlords at this point, dude. These are the worst of the fucking worst. Holy shit, dude. Oh, my mouth is literally watering thinking about, oh, the, the opportunities, dude. The fucking incredible future. It just immediately would, would open up so much real estate. Housing markets all around big cities, all around the fucking country, all of a sudden opening up at least 30% of inventory, okay? Prices begin to normalize. People no longer have to sleep in sleeping bags outside as they go to college or uh, when they go to their fucking place of work. People no longer have to shower inside of gyms. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, and best of all, I'm not even talking about the humanitarian aspect of eviscerating homelessness because that is just the cherry on the top. The real goodness. You want to know what the real icing is not the cherry on the top of the icing every single airbnb quadrillionaire tiktoker is crying on tiktok oh oh my god oh just imagine a future where every single guy who's just like uh i don't get it just find a hundred thousand dollars and put a fucking down payment on your first house and then rent it out on airbnb uh, uh what the fuck you're so stupid for not doing this every single guy that has done that over their lives are their lives are not over they just have to go back and work at mcdonald's but their tiktoks are over oh no more content such as this that is a true prize that's a prize honestly almost as good as being able to house hundreds of thousands of people globally that's how much i fucking despise the get rich quick scamming ass Dumb motherfuckers with like rich parents who were just like, How did you make your first million? Um, I found a hundred thousand dollars in unmarked bills that I put into my first ever apartment that I owned in Vancouver, and then I turned it into an Airbnb. Oh, uh, anyway, fuck, anger, which is amazing. The only thing I was hoping to shed some light on is that it's not as easy to get here as some people make it seem. It's actually quite difficult and time intensive. And while the views are gorgeous, you're staying along the water, there's amazing food and amazing people. Um, it's not as easy as it might seem. So if you want to come here, definitely make the time investment and you know plan to stay here for more than a couple days because this is us after our dinner. I am literally running up the stairs out of exhaustion after eating a full plate of pasta and drinking a full glass of wine and we did have an absolutely incredible time so i, I bet that's the airbnb owner right there he's got the airbnb owner face i want everyone to know that we absolutely loved it here and we highly recommend